Hello everybody. This is going to be our second lecture on our lecture series on design of pre-engineered building and design of truss shed. Today, in this second lecture, we will be doing modeling of pre-engineered building in ETAPS. As I talked about at the end in our last lecture, we would be, uh, I thought, or I plan to do a model in uh, SAP 2000. But uh, before doing the modeling of truss and design of truss in SAP 2000, for now we will be learning how to model, analyze, and design a pre-engineered building. And that modeling analysis and design will be done in ETAP software. So before starting with ETAPS, I have made the plan of our pre-engineered building here in AutoCAD. Let us go through quickly with the plan and then we will start with modeling in ETAPS. So if you see here first, we have a roof plan of our pre-engineered building. There are 13 grids along the x-axis and there are 7 grids along the y-axis. Our grids are spaced at a distance of 7.242 meter at the ends that is between 1 and 2 and 12 and 13 and in the middle the grid spacing is 7.667 meter so these 13 grids mean so we have the truss frames along these 13 spans remember that truss are always built along the sorter direction since our sorter direction is the y direction here and our grid lines parallel to the y direction are named as 1 to 13. Along these 13 grids, the truss frames will be built. So the total length of our pre-engineered building or pre-engineered structure in the x-axis in the longer direction is 91.154 meter. Whereas in the shorter direction, the spacing or the total length of our building is 40 meter. And the spacing is such that here you can see 6 meters, 7, 7, 7, 7, 6. So, other things that you can see on this roof plan is that our covering or roof covering is corrugated seats. Then you can see some diagonal bracings here. These are plan bracings. And if you go to the elevation, you can see that the truss section along the grids 2 to 12, that is from this second grid to the second last grid is shown here on the left hand side. You can see that our truss structure is supported by three columns, two at the ends and one in the middle. The span of each of these sections is 20 meter. The height of the column is 5 meter at the events and the maximum height till the ridge is 7 meter at the center. On the other hand, for the truss sections at 1 and 13, that is the gable end section, our truss frame is supported by 7 columns. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And the spacing of these columns is, as we saw in the plan, 6 meter at the end and 7, 7, 7, 7 towards the center. So this is our truss elevation. And our front elevation is somewhat like this. We have stone or we have masonry wall here. We have openings of different sizes. And then we have some elevation bracings, which are demonstrated by this yak shaped lines here in our figure. So this is the building or this is the structure that we are going to analyze in our current lecture. So now let's begin with modeling the structure. For that, let's go to ETAPS. Go to new model. Use this option. Use built-in settings with display units will be metric SI, steel section database, Indian, steel design code, IS800, and concrete design code although we do not need this now let's select this as is456 and then click on ok now let's see our grid spacing is almost uniform but towards the end 
it is uh, non-uniform that means towards the end we have a different spans so let's just first uh, give our details in this uniform grid spacing and then we will modify those later so number of grid lines in x direction okay let's just leave this as it is for now let's click on ok and then we will modify it after this grids are showing here I will close the model explorer for now because we do not need that right click anywhere on the interface and then click on left click on add modify grids first let's uh, edit our grids in the two horizontal directions click on modify show grid system and then let's see here first first on the left hand side you have the x grid data which are named as a b c d and then on the y grid data you have one two three four so how many grids are there in the x direction let's see there are one two thirteen thirteen grids that means we have already four grids here five sorry four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen these are our 13 grids let's display our grid spacing or let's display our grid data is spacing here we have now the grid data is being displayed as ordinates let's click on display grid data is spacing so our spacing will be the first spacing is let's see here 7.242 meters 7.242 and other grids are spaced at 7.667 7.667 i will copy this and i will copy paste since our grid spacing is uniform except at the ends i'm just copying and pasting the same value and finally our last grid spacing is again the same 7.242 meter so let's write this as 7.242 so this is our grids in the x direction and in the y direction we have how many grids here we have seven grids one two three four five six seven so here are four let's add five six seven our first grid is spaced at 6 meter then 7 meter 7 meter 7 meter 7 meter and finally 6 meter so our grid is completed here then i will go to okay i will click on okay at the bottom this okay is not being displayed here because of uh there's some resolution problem with my computer you can just go to the bottom of this dialog box and there you will find OK. Just click on that. Left click on that OK button. Now let's modify our story data. For that click on modify so story data. We have three levels in our structure here. One is the base. The second is our Eve level and the third is our Riz level. So let's just delete these two stories we, we do not need delete existing structure at story the elevation from the ground level to the top of our eve that is eve level is five meter and then the height from eve level to ridge level is two meter because our total height from ground level to ridge level is seven meter so if this is two meter we do not need any master story so i will just leave this as no and no then left click on ok and left click on ok So I will just walk in 3D here. Let's just do this. Now before proceeding further, I want to save my model. Save. Save it to your desired location. I will create a new folder here. 
I will name our as PV model. So our model is saved. There is one option in ETAPS that reminds you in fixed interval of time to save the model. And if you want to activate that, go to options and go to auto save model. Check this box auto save model file at specified interval and interval in minutes. Let's keep it five. So if you do not save your model in the interval, then after five minutes, the program reminds you to save your model. So let's click on OK. Now, once we have made the grids, it's time to define the materials and then the frame sections. I have gone into detail about the various options available in ETAPS in our first lecture series on our YouTube channel, the design of RCC building course. If you want to go in detail regarding how, what is the workflow pattern or what is the flow of work, how the uh, modeling analysis and design proceeds in ETAP. You can go through the, those videos in that particular lecture series. For this series, I will go through or I will uh, go through all of these steps relatively quickly. Now, first, let's define material. We want to define the material for structural steel here. So, I will go to define and material properties. I will add new material. Reason India, material type steel, standard Indian, and grade. I will select the grade FE345. Since this is a large PEV structure and a particularly or an important PEV structure, we would like to build our sections or we would like our structural steel sections to be of higher grade. So I will select FE345 here and then click on OK. So these are our properties of FE345 grade steel. Click on OK. Our material is defined and click on OK. Now, before going to define our section properties, let me show you one diagram here. Here I have downloaded one diagram from the internet. And if you can see this diagram here, you see that this part of our shade here, this is also a PEV shade, an example of a PEV shade. You can see that these parts of our PEV shade, they are not uniform in cross section. You can see first the cross section is decreasing till this point, then it is constant up to this point or up to this point, then it is increasing again, then it is decreasing again. That means in order to save the amount of structural steel, we do not build a uniform or prismatic section along this whole length. Since our span of this whole cross is 40 meters, that means from center to one half, it is 20 meters. And if you use a prismatic section along this whole 20 meter length, then it will be uneconomical. So we will be also learning, uh, we will be defining and in that process we will be learning how to define non-prismatic sections. Non-prismatic section means those sections which are not uniform in cross section. For example, if you see this section, it is of, it has higher width or it has higher depth at one section than at the other end, it is of lower depth. So we will be using this kind of non-uniform or non-prismatic sections in our model. And we will be using this type of non-uniform section for both columns and for both raptors, raptors and columns. So to do that, before going to define the material section or sorry, not material, frame sections, Let's first draw a frame sections in our one of these grids using the properties of null frame section. That means if you click on this draw beam column brace option, you can also go to this option through this draw menu at the top. Draw beam column brace object, draw beam column brace. And if you choose this property as none here. None means 
we will be drawing a section but it will not have any stiffness and it will not have any properties we will assign those properties later now what to do is let's build the columns and let's build the rafter of our pv shed at one end first Okay, select this option again. Click on this from here to our eve level. Let's draw a column. And this is our center. Now you can see on your monitor here. I did not save the model, so it is asking to save our work. It is time to save your work. Do you want to save your model now? Okay. So like this, if you Activate the auto save option, then ETAPS will remind you from time to time. I will just go to my option and auto save model. I will just uncheck this. Okay. Now, after this, from this center, I will draw a column from center to our ridge level. This is our ridge level. And then I will also draw. Okay, I will not draw at the other end. I will just replicate it after some time. Then I will draw a rafter from here to here. And then I'll right click and escape. So if you just right click on one of these die frames, you will see that our geometry, we have joined positions here and now we have length of the frame here but in assignments we have no assignment at present section property none property modifiers and release we haven't assigned any property to this frame section we will do assign these properties only after we define the section properties so let's just click close here now let's go to define section properties frame section here are various default section properties. We will not be using those. We will just define new section properties. For that, click on add new property. We will choose steel I section. And this steel I section, let's name this steel I section is this is rafter 1200 so material will be fa 345 and then change the section dimensions here you can either provide section dimensions yourself while adding a new property or you can use the option import new properties from the previous dialog box let's just click cancel from here you have, can import new properties and then you can uh, import the default design sections or default IS sections in which the dimension section dimensions are already given or you can add your new property by yourself so add new property still I section let's say this is rafter 1200 and material is FA 345 total depth 1200 Top flange width, I will use 350. Top flange thickness, I will take it at 25. Wave thickness, 13. Bottom flange width, again, 350. And bottom flange thickness, 25. Then I will click on OK. So I will delete other properties for now. Except this rafter 1200, I will delete all other properties. Okay, now then I will add another property here. Again, still iframe. Here I will add this is rafter 750. Material will be EFE 345 again. Total depth 750. Top flange width 350. This top flange thickness 25, width thickness 13. Again, bottom flange width 350. Then I will click on OK. 
So these two sections that I have defined here, these are prismatic sections. Now I want one section, I want one non-prismatic section whose beginning end is this rafter 1200 section, which I have defined at first, and then the end is rafter 750 section. I will define this kind of non-prismatic section. For that, I will go to add new property again. And under this special non-prismatic, I will choose non-prismatic. And after you click on non-prismatic, let's say I will give the name non-prismatic 1200 to 750 because I want a section starting with 1200 and I want a section ending with 750. So this section said non-prismatic and our start section will be rafter 1200 and our end section will be rafter 750 and length type will be proportional. That means let's look at the diagram above. This has higher cross section at the first end that is starting section and lower cross section at the other end that is ending section. And I want this length to decrease proportionally that is along with the length. So this is how you define a non-prismatic section. Click the OK at the bottom. You cannot see here in my ETAPS model here. There will be click button at the end. Click on OK button. So we have defined non-prismatic 1200 to 750 section. Now, another section I want to define is from 750. Okay, let's just stop the definition here and then click on OK. I will come to more definitions later. For that, first, since our this rafter is divided into different frames of non-prismatic section, what I will do is I will first divide these frames into three equal parts. So I click on this frame, go to edit, edit frames, divide frames and divide into three frame objects click on ok so now i have three frame objects here and this last section i want to uh, divide it again into two equal halves so i will select this edit edit frames divide frames into two frame objects click on ok so now we have four sections here so let's click on the first section and then assign it a frame section that we have defined go to assign frame section property non prismatic 1200 to 750 click on ok so the 1200 end is at this left end and the 750 section is at the right end now another section i want to start with 750 here and end with 900 section here so i will go to define section property frame section and I have to define a new rafter of 900 section so I will go to add new property still I section and then rafter 900 material will be FE 345 so this will be total depth on 900 mm depth section 900 flange width I will take is 300 Top flange thickness 20 mm, wave thickness 80 mm, bottom flange width 300 mm, and bottom flange thickness again 10 mm. I have taken wave thickness as 8 mm, bottom flange thickness 20 mm, not 8 mm. Then click on OK. Now again, add new property non prismatic. So this is our non-prismatic section starting with 750 mm depth and ending with 900 mm depth. So our starting section will be rafter 750 and our ending section will be rafter 900. Length type will be proportional. Click on OK at the end. OK. Now I will select this second frame here and assign frame section property 
non prismatic 750 to 900 and for third section let's see here our second section is starting with a 750 mm depth section at this end and ending with 900 mm section depth at the other end now again i want this time to start my next section with 900 mm end and then end it with 750 mm end for that i will go to define section properties frame section i will just click on this non prismatic 750 to 900 add copy of property i will change this name to non prismatic now 900 to 750 and it will just be reverse here now start section will be after 900 and end section will be after 750 you can see here in this diagram our starting section is higher that means of higher depth and the ending section is of lower depth and then click on ok at the bottom ok now click on this third frame section go to assign frame section property rafter 900 to 750 and this last section i want a uniform of prismatic section since we are ending this third frame in a section of 750 mm depth i want this fourth frame to be of uniform depth 750 so i will select this assign frame section property now i will choose rafter 750 which is the prismatic section and then click on ok so now we have defined and modeled these four frame sections here. Now for column sections, for this end column, what I will do is, I will define a section with 350 mm depth at the bottom and 900 mm depth at the top. So I have already defined a 900 mm depth section. I will go to define section properties frame section add new property still i and this will be this is our column 350 material will be efa 345 total depth will be 350 top flange width 200 Top plans thickness 16, weight thickness 8, again bottom plans width 200, and bottom plans thickness 16. So click on OK. Now add new property, non prismatic. This will be column starting with 350 and ending with 900 350 start section and end section is a rafter 900 so this is our section and then click on ok click on ok so this i will assign frame section property column 350 to 900 and for the center column i will just give a prismatic section of 350 mm depth i section so assign frame first select that column then go to assign frame section properties column 350 click on ok so now we have completed this here now i want to replicate this half to the right hand side grid on this same grid line aa so what i will do is I will select this frame section okay before before doing that we have columns in this grid 6 6 and 5 5 also because this is our gable end frame we saw in our AutoCAD diagram for the gable end frames we have column set all grids here so what i will do is i will just select this draw beam column brace option select property is column 350 and then draw 
from here to here and from here to here similarly now we do not need this whole part so we will select this frame Okay, let's delete this once again okay let's go to our elevation view here this is AA elevation view so we go to elevation view A and now we will draw our column here from here to here and from here to here we'll, we will not be needing this part at the top so select these two columns and select these Okay, first select these two frames here go to edit edit frames divide frames and select this bracket intersection with selected frames and joints and click on ok so now I can select this and delete and then I can join these two sections again because these were joined at the beginning edit edit frames and join frames similarly for this part select this and then this frame go to edit edit frame divide frames bracket intersection with selected frames and objects select this and delete and then again select these two frames and then edit edit frames and join frames so now this modeling is complete for one side now what I would want to do is replicate these parts to the other side for that I will select all of these parts go to edit and replicate replicate I will do in a linear not linear I will do in a radial fashion for radial center I will specify I will pick one point on the model and click this point and then the increment data radial means since this half is at the opposite end of this half I will click the increment data is 180 degrees then I will click on apply and then click on ok so this is our complete model complete model for truss frame at one end now what I will do is I will just replicate this first I will replicate this hole to the far end because these seven columns are present only at the far end there so I will just select this all control R replicate I will have to replicate this in the positive x direction since this red axis which is the positive axis is going towards this side I will replicate it in the positive x direction and our distance is I am replicating from grid 1 to grid 13 so our distance is 91.154 meter so dx will be 91.154 apply ok so now I will replicate in these between grids the grids in the between for that I will select this all at first and then I will unselect these columns which are not present at the columns grids in between I will click on R replicate first I will replicate only in this grid since the spacing is different for the rest of our grids the distance is 7.242 meters so DX will be 7.242 we will replicate it only once so apply 
okay now what i will do is i will select all of these frames i will select all of these frames here and this column also and i will replicate it in the remaining grids which is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 remaining grids so control r our dx now will be 7.667 meter 7.667 meter and number will be 10 so if you hover onto this apply button you will see the dotted frames that means this is the place where our frame is going to be replicated we haven't selected this middle column so select this also and then click on apply and then click on ok so we have completed the modeling of our truss frames save the model if you go to extrude view for now click on this extruded view toggle and you will see here that let's see here you can see the non prismatic sections here let's go to our elevation view and go to our elevation a you can see that all of these are non prismatic sections here so we can see that our non prismatic sections are being joined at different places as our non prismatic section is being joined here but our columns are here so if that makes a difference later then we will make that correction at that moment so go to 3d view we have completed this truss frame structures now we have to model the beams resting upon our structure we will not be modeling the purlins and the roof coverings we will provide the loadings of those structures or of those parts is dead load superimposed dead load we will not be modeling the purlins and we will not be modeling the roofing sheet now we will model the beams and then the bracings first we will model the beams and our beams we will use a medium channel section of depth 300 so for that let me just go outside of this extruded view and then i will go to define section properties frame section now i will import import new properties I will import a channel section so still channel section here i will select the default material is yafi 345 and i will import this ismc 300 section click on ok so ismc 300 channel has been imported here click on ok now i will draw this beams in our diagram for that I will select this draw beam column bracing option select this option is ismc 300 and then draw here So since this will take some time i will draw the beams on one half of this frame and for the other half i will just complete it i will pause the video recording at that moment and then i will show you the completed drawings so i will just first before drawing this let us go to this view option set view options this tick mark sign and then under this joint objects uncheck this invisible sign we want to see the joint objects also so that it's easier to draw the beam and then click on ok now our joint subjects are visible then select this draw option again and then draw
this our columns are not exactly under this the meeting points of our different non prismatic sections this should not make much of a difference if we have designed the joints for those non prismatic sections properly remember what we are drawing at present is not for lens because these are spaced quite far apart these are just the beams we will not model purlins in our structure. We will just assign the loads for those purlins. So we have completed modeling of beams for one half. We will do similar modeling for another half. I will just pause this and then show you the completed modeling part. So let's see here we have completed the modeling of our beams also. If you click on this extruded view, then you will see the extruded view of our PV set here. I will just go out of this extruded view, right click, and then I will click on this set grid system visibility then our grids are invisible here you can see our diagrams here now what i will do is i will just delete these joints here we don't need them here okay it's okay then i will go to this set view options and i will again make the joints invisible and then click on OK button at the end. So now this is our PV shade here. Now we are left with modeling of bracings. So for bracings, we will define a rod section. So go to define section properties, frame sections, add new property select this this is a pipe section okay what we will do is just, let's just cancel this then click on import new properties uh, okay let's do this add new property in this section shape click on this drop down menu and choose steel rod and then click on ok so now we have to define a rod bracing. I will name this as rod bracing of 25 mm diameter. Material will be FE345 and diameter will be 25 mm. Click on OK and click on OK. Now we will drop bracings here. Let's see in our AutoCAD model, our bracings are in between this grid 2 and 3, in middle 7 and 8, and in 11 and 12. Our bracings in both plan and elevation will be of same material that is 25 mm diameter rod bracing. For that, but th this is our section where we will have bracing. So click on this drop beam column brace and select property type as rod bracing 25 mm. Now then draw bracings here. Okay, let's do this here. Uh, let's make this visible like this and then draw our bracing. Be careful if you are not able to draw properly, then zoom onto this diagram.
so this is our bracings now let's rotate this and draw bracings on the other side also This is an extra. Oh, we have made a mistake here. Let's see here. We haven't drawn properly here, so our one extra joint was being made visible here. So let's go to draw ISMC 300 beam again. ISMC 300 from here to here to here. So it's okay now. And now let's go back to drawing our bracings. Let's select the section is rod bracing and now go to this end here. So bracings transmit the lateral forces through forces of tension and compression. There won't be moment in these bracings. So after drawing these bracings, what we will do is we will provide moment releases to these bracings so that they don't transmit the moment forces. So we have completed here. Now one bracing will be in the middle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So another bracing is somewhere here let's see after one two three four fifth grid so one two three four fifth grid here so let's draw here and continue drawing the plan bracings Now let's go to other end and then draw elevation bracings here. So now we have completed the modeling of these bracings also. Select all of these bracings. To select that, go to select, select, and then object type. We will select braces here. Okay, this is only showing the elevation pressing. So what we will do is we'll go to select, select and then properties and frame sections. That is a rod pressing. Close. And then what we will do is we will go to assign and then frame and then go to end releases. Uh, let's see here releases and partial fixity and then we will release moment at both ends and then torsion at one end and click on ok so this is our releases has been assigned here so save the model and before ending with today's lecture what i would like to do is i would like to assign the restraints and to assign the restraints go to plan and go to base uh, something is wrong with our model here let's say our joints are not being displayed at these ends okay but they are being selected here so it's okay so there is an extra joint here let me see what it is again okay in the middle 
let's go to plan base and select okay there are joints in the middle also so what we will do is go to the base select all the joints you can see here as per our placement of our steel columns our joints are being selected go to assign joint and restraints generally we want have fixed joints or fixed foundations at the bottom for this PEV sets. We may design such fixed bases also, but generally we allow some rotations at the bases. To allow for rotation, we will only check these restraints translation in X, Y, and Z direction. That means that we have selected this joint here. This is not roller, this is not pin joint here. We select this hinge joints and then click on OK. So restraints has been applied here. So this is our final model. Let's see the extruded view. Okay, let's go to assign and clear display of assigns. And let's see the extruded view. This is our extruded view of our model. If you want your model to be displayed, these colors of these sections to be displayed as per the colors given to different section properties, you can go to this set display option and view by colors of section properties and then click on OK at the bottom. At the bottom. So now these are displayed as section properties. I will just display these as objects and then click on OK. So we have completed the modeling of our PEV set. In our next lecture, what we will be learning is before proceeding with further analysis and definition of load patterns and load combinations, we will first see how the loads are calculated, including dead load, live load, and wind load. Wind load will be the most important. We will learn in detail about the calculation and application of wind load for this PEV structure. And then only in the next video lecture, we will go on to applying those loads. So this will be the end of our today's lecture. Next lecture will be very important is we will be dealing with application of wind load. First calculation and then application of wind loads. We will see how our different types of loadings for wind load are calculated based on our IS-875 part 3. So you can also go through the IS code, IS875 part 3 uh, before our next video lecture comes out because that will be much easier for you and you can understand this application of Windows very easily. So we will meet again soon in the next lecture. Thank you.